Okay, I think everybody should be here now and I welcome you to this webinar about interactive graph editing. My name is Benjamin Niedermann, I'm a software developer at Yworks and I'm happy to welcome you to the ninth episode of this series about the art of graph visualization. In this series I show you how to create not only beautiful but also meaningful and useful graph visualizations and with this I mean graph visualizations that you can use to derive new information from your connected data. In the very first five episodes of this um, series, I gave a broad overview on important aspects that you need to take into account when creating such graph visualizations. This uh, included, for example, layout, styling, animation, but also interaction techniques. Then in the other episodes, subsequently, I showed how to do this programmatically, um, focusing uh, each time on one of these aspects. And today I again would like to do this, focusing on interactive graph editing and giving you um, concrete examples how to do this um, on an implementation level. So um, taking the programmatic perspective and creating actual, an actual application with this. And to that end, I would like to use Y files. So the main product of Yworks and um, a diagramming SDK. And as a tool, I would like to use um, our playground, which runs with uh, Y files HTML. Um, but if you come from another platform, let's say from C sharp or uh, you are using Java, this is no problem. The API is very similar so that you can easily understand and transfer the ideas from this webinar to your problems. So first of all, I would like to show you the playground um, as a tool so that you can understand how to use this playground and all of the examples that I will show during the webinar, you can also access in this um, playground. So let's go to the playground. Um, one moment. Um, and the playground is, uh, consists basically on a two main components, namely the component on the left-hand side containing the actual code that you can write here in the playground. And then on the right-hand side, you have a canvas where the graph visualization is drawn. So if I press run here, um, basically this code here is executed and this graph visualization is created. The idea is that you are given two global objects, namely um, a graph object uh, that you can see here, and you can manipulate this graph object. So for example, by creating single nodes, but by also creating edges um, and also adding labels, for example. For example, and then what you can do is you can use the second global object, namely the graph component, to actually draw this graph. And uh, here the idea is that this graph component represents this drawing area on the right hand side. And here what we do is uh, we just call um, the graph component with morph layout and tell the graph component, okay, it should draw the graph using a tree layout. And as we have created uh, the graph before as a tree, um, we actually get a tree layout that looks like this, where we have, uh, actually show this tree structure. Uh, one remark at this point, um, the graph component already knows um, the graph object. Uh, this is done in the background when using Y files, um, not in the playground, uh, you can also um, specify which which graph of the uh, should be used for the graph component. Uh, so this is a very small example um, how to use um, this playground if you're interested in more complicated examples but or in other use cases you can also go here to the examples menu and here you can find a lot of um, other examples. In this webinar um, I will also give you uh, some links for, for the playground to directly get to the examples that I show you. So let's go back to the presentation. And um, so in the previous episodes, I always used a running example and I would like to use reuse this example again. In this um, webinar, it's about a music database, which is called Discox. Um, and it's basically a Wikipedia-like database with a lot of um, entries about audio recordings and about artists. So thousands of users maintain this database and it already contains millions of entries. And the nice thing is that you can easily extract the data and 
build up a graph structure on this and can play around with this, um, just finding out how to create graph visualizations. And uh, in the previous webinars, I focused on the idea that we try to visualize this data. So I showed you different examples how to visualize this data, uh, for example, focusing on layouts, but also on the styling. Today, I would like to take a bit different direction on this. Um, today, I would like to present you um, how to create a small editor. Um, and the idea or the scenario is that um, this editor you could use to actually um, manipulate the database so that the user could uh, create this graph visualization interactively and then uh, derive from this new entries for, for the database. So let's have a look um, how this um, how this editor should look like. Um, you can also go to this link here. Um, uh, so um, let's go to the playground. So on the left hand side, again, you, you can find the entire code. I have uh, divided this into some sub regions that you can expand and you can see the entire code. But during the webinar, I will explain this uh, block step by step. So um, for, for the moment, I'm not interested in, in the code, but only in uh, the application itself. So let's talk about uh, what we can do. So of course, what we would like to do is we would like to create um, some nodes, uh, maybe some nodes representing artists, but uh, maybe we want also to create nodes representing uh, music groups like this. And of course, what we also would like to do is to create um, some edges. And then when the edges are created, uh, some labels should also be uh, created. Uh, of course, it would be nice to apply some automatic layout uh, by just clicking on a button and then uh, maybe also editing um, the graph visualization would be nice. Um, so, for example, changing the label and reacting on the change of the label. So let's say that we have here Paul McCartney. Uh, and then in the background, I um, query some database to get the image and then the node is um, exchanged. Um, besides that, it would be also nice if we have some uh, typical editor uh, functionality like snapping. So if I move this node here around, then we get these snapping lines um, telling me uh, where it would be good to place this node. Um, also, I have here some kind of quit snapping. So these are the ideas that I would like to present in, in the, today's webinar, and I will do this step by step. The structure of the webinar will be as follows. Uh, first of all, I will talk about the basics. Um, so how to set up uh, such an editor in NY files. And then I will talk about how to create and modify graph items in, in this um, editor. And then after that, I will talk about more specialized uh, things like snapping, but also how to uh, customize the clipboard. Um, and then at the end, I will also give an outlook uh, to other topics that I haven't covered in this webinar. So let's start with the basics. Um, so the idea is that the graph component that you have seen before in the, um, the playground is basically the uh, main object that controls the canvas and then this graph component has um, also some kind of input mode uh, which handles um, the events so the user events so and in Y files, you can find two major input modes, namely the graph viewer input mode and the graph editor input mode. And both are basically event handlers uh, that you can configure and which you can use to react on user interactions. So the graph viewer input mode is for viewer centric applications. Um, and one example that I've also shown in the previous webinar is, for example, here this Wonderlands uh, demo. So I can just go here. And the idea is that we can explore the data um, and then we can also um, extend uh, the graph visualization. But basically the graph visualization or the data behind that is already given. We uh, just um, expand the graph visualization, but it's not like a really editing um, of, of the graph visualization. It's more like only viewing the data. So, um, 
this is what I've shown also in the previous episode. And then today I would like to focus on the editor centric application. So a typical example for this would be I at live um, where you actually can create uh, entire graph visualization. So here you have already some small example. Uh, you can drop in some nodes and you can um, just create edges and so on. And um, basically the entire Wyatt um, application is also built on Wi files. So if you're interested in the view input mode, then I recommend you the episode um, that I've, uh, episode eight. And uh, today it will be about uh, the graph editor input mode. So the graph editor input mode um, is a really large uh, class basically in, in Y files that um, has a lot of members. So uh, one part are operations or the uh, members that allow you to enable operations that the user can do. So for example, uh, you have here these properties um, about creating edges or creating nodes. And what you can do is you can say, okay, if I want to use the graph editor input mode and I would like to allow creating edges, but I don't want to allow creating nodes. So you can really customize this for your use case. Um, further, as this input mode is, already large, we also um, have um, introduced child uh, input modes um, that are special, uh, specialized for some certain use cases and interactions. So for example, uh, when an edge is created, there's a special child input mode that is responsible um, for this. And there are several um, input modes that handle different use cases. Apart from that, um, there are also a lot of events that you can react on so you can register your listeners and then you can um, react on on the corresponding events so for example um, here you have such events like some kind of click events but uh, later on you will see also events where we react on on creating edges or creating nodes um, depending on on the events it's i they are either located directly on the graph editor input mode or in, in one of the child um, input modes uh, sometimes it's also useful to get some kind of feeling about the events when they are triggered. Of course, it, uh, you can read this also in, in the documentation, but we also have some kind of demo that, uh, that you can use for this purpose. So if I go there, um, you have here this demo and what you can see is that uh, you can say on, on which uh, kind of events we would like to react. Uh, so for example, I could uh, say, okay, if an edge is created, I would like to see this. Um, and now when I uh, create this edge, what you can see on the right hand side, that is that there are already a lot of different mouse events. But when I uh, release this edge here, for example, then I also get this um, edge created event. Uh, and this is really helpful sometimes to, to see how these events uh, are fired um, in NY files. So how so now I have explained a bit how, how to use or what possibilities you have to use the graph editor input mode, but now I would like to show how to use it actually. And uh, it's quite simple um, setting up the graph editor input mode. So basically what you need to do is just creating one um, and then configuring it here. For example, I've used the orthogonal edge editing context, um, which basically is um, the idea that when creating an edge, um, the edge is not um, arbitrarily drawn, but um, uh, you only can use horizontal and vertical segments. Um, I can show this here in this video. In, so when placing or routing or drawing this edge, you can only draw orthogonal edges uh, using some bands. Um, apart from that, what you also can do is to configure this further, this graph editor input mode. So for example, you can set some defaults for, for the styles that are used in creating edges. Here in this case, I use an, uh, 
in stroke with four pixels and the current color this current color is a special uh, thing also in um in in the playground um and then i also say okay i would like to use um the css um ed uh, class edge style um and so let's have a look at this um how to use this then actually in in the uh, playground um, so here's the code that I've just shown you before. I've cre created this object, and then I also define some um, some uh, default or values. Uh, but what I also need to do is to register this uh, input mode. And for uh, to that end, you can use this uh, property input mode of the graph component and just tell uh, the graph component, okay, use this input mode. And with this, you already have a lot of functionality. Uh, so when I click here, for example, I can create uh, these nodes and uh, I can also move them around. I can resize them. Um, and as, as I said, you can also configure this, uh, whether this is allowed or not. Um, further, I can also draw here some edges. Uh, in this case, um, I can only draw orthogonal edges. So this already is the basic setup for the graph editor input mode. So let's talk about how to create um, graph elements and modify graph elements. And I would like to start with the node elements. Uh, so there's this property on the graph editor input mode that says allow create nodes. And uh, by default, this is set to true and um, in, in our use case, we also want to have this. And the idea is now that uh, we would like to have uh, two types of nodes and uh, so that we can create nodes for the artists, but also nodes for the uh, music groups. Um, and we need to tell this somehow uh, the graph editor input mode. So how to do this? Um, one possibility is uh, that we use um, the node creator of the graph input mode. Um, which I will show in a few seconds. So here's the first of all, some, some setup. Um, so what I do is I define a mode um, and this mode is either an artist or the music group. And by default, it's the artist. And then the playground has the possibility to add some toolbar buttons. Uh, this is a special thing for the uh, playground. Uh, you can react here on any kind of, of uh, button, of course. Um, and the idea is that um, uh, we, we tell the button here at this uh, in this Lambda function how, how to change the mode. So basically, if we have a music group, we change the mode to artist, and otherwise, um, we change the mode to music group again. And we use this information then when creating a node. And here to that end, uh, the graph editor input mode has the property node uh, creator. And this also expects a Lambda function. And the idea is that this is always called when a node should be created. And then this function is responsible for creating the actual node. So what we do here is we uh, call the graph and tell the graph, okay, it should create a node and this node is returned. And what we also do is we configure this node. Uh, so this function also gives us the location uh, where the node should be uh, created. So uh, the basically the, the center location or the, the location of, of the mouse click. Um, and then um, we also get the graph. And sometimes if you have some grouping, it also tells you whether um, uh, it should have a parent node, this node. Uh, so what I do here is, okay, I say, okay, the, the parent becomes the parent, the layout of the node, so the shape or the size of the node um, should have the node default size and the location should be just the location um, of, of the mouse click. And then um, if you go to the playground, I can show you this in, in a second. Uh, I also have here this uh, predefined array of styles. Um, and for each of these modes, I have an defined an own style. Um, and I just request the style here. And then the node also gets a tag. The tag is just an additional information. It can be uh, defined arbitrarily and it's helpful um, for, for, for um, creating the logical flow in, in your application. And then we also add some labels. Um, so uh, also defining some label position, which is 
predefined in in the or which I have predefined in the playground, and then at the end I also would like to have some ports um, at my node where I can actually add um, add some some edge. So how does it look like in in the playground? Uh, we have here these regions, and in this region basic definitions, you can find uh, these node styles, as I said. Um, and here I have defined uh, for, for the artist um, an image node style, but also for the music group, I have um, defined an image node style. Uh, and here I've also defined some label positions. And then here, when creating the nodes, I actually um, uh, yeah, apply the code that I've just uh, shown on on the slides. So this is basically all all what you need to do. Um, and when executing this, I can click here, and now I can go to this button here, uh, mode, and then I can also change um, uh, change the type of node. Um, next, what I would like to show is um, how to create edges such that I can only connect. Uh, music groups with artists, but not with other music groups. So for example, here I cannot uh, uh, leave the, or say that the edge should end at another music group, but it needs to end at an artist. And now I would like to show how to do this. And to that end, I would like to show the create edge input mode. Um, and here I would like to start uh, with a bit easier example, namely um, about how to reacting um, uh, on, on edge creations. And as you have seen, there's this property node creator. There is also the property edge creator um, on this child input mode. But there are also events that you can use to react on edge creation. So for example, here's this um, event edge created, and it's always called uh, when the edge is created. Um, and the idea is now that um, we just react on such an um, event and to that we can register a um, listener to our child input mode on this um, event and then we can react so for example we can say okay we would like to customize our edge uh, the edge is automatically created in the background uh, we don't need to think about this but we just want to customize this uh, for example by adding a label um, so this is um, also um, shown here in this example So if I create two nodes, um, I need to create another node of another type. And now when I release um, uh, the mouse button, the edge is actually created. And then uh, also the label is created because we react on, on the listener. So now I really want to show you the, the example that I've uh, talked, be, uh, talked before. Uh, so I would like to um, manage that I can only create edges between, um, between uh, artist nodes and music group nodes, uh, but not uh, between music groups nodes and music group nodes. But to that end, um, I think I've just skipped a uh, slide, uh, namely this. Um, for, to that end, there is the interface iPort candidate provider that we can implement. And the idea is that um, we tell the graph editor input mode which um, ports it can use to connect uh, n n the, the new edge to. And so what we need to do is we need to define the ports for the beginning of the edge, so for the source of the edge. And we also need to define port candidates for the end of the edge. Uh, so for the target of the edge. And then what we basically do is that um, we say, okay, that we don't create any candidates for music group nodes when the edge starts at a music group node. And uh, if it starts at an artist node, we don't create any um, ports for um, other artists nodes uh, for the target. So this is the basic example uh, idea. So what we can do is uh, we can implement um, this interface. We don't need to implement the entire interface, but we can use 
uh, and base class which already implements this interface and just uh, specialize some of um, of the important functions or methods uh, so First of all, what I expect is that um, I get the node from which the new edge so should start. So let's assume this is an artist node. Um, and now I would like to uh, create candidates um, where the edge actually can start at this artist node. To that end, I can um, override this method get port candidates. And basically what it does, it's um, fills this list here of iPort candidates um, with the existing ports that are already existing at the, at the artist node. And then um, it returns this candidates and the graph editor input mode will use these port candidates for the for possible starting points um, of this edge. Um, then what I also want to do is to define the target ports um, of this edge. And here, basically, uh, the logic comes in where we say, OK, we can only connect to music groups and assuming that the given node is an artist node. So what we do is um, we um, get, get this uh, a source candidate. Um, and then we also go to the, um, uh, yeah, we, we go basically, um, no, I, I think I have, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I think I have um, mixed up this a bit. Uh, the idea is that um, the owner is the actual node where we want to end uh, the, um, end the um, edge. So here the idea is that, um, we have an edge and we would like to decide where it should end. Uh, the source node is, so for example, the artist node, and then the end is here in, in our example, maybe uh, the music node. And then we need to decide whether this is, um, whether we can create valid or invalid ports. Um, sorry for, for this confusion. Um, so here the idea is, uh, or make it, let's make it concrete the owner is is a music group um, and the question is can we end our edge at, at this music group um, so what we need to decide is whether this source node is an um, also music group or an artist group, uh, node um, so what we do is we just take the tag of of the node uh, this is what i've added before uh, to the node uh, so the information, whether it's a music group or an artist node. And then if the tag is different to um, the actual port tag um, of my owner, uh, then I know this is a valid port and otherwise it's an invalid port. So if both uh, nodes have the same type. Uh, so this is basically the idea of, uh, of this uh, port candidate provider. So... Let's go to, to the um, play count. Um, I just want to show this um, again. Um, so I have here two artist nodes and a music group nodes. And what I can do is I can start here this edge. When starting this edge, uh, this method is, um, this get port candidates is called. And now when I go here, for example, to the artists here at this point, the get target um, port candidates method is called, but uh, on on the node I'm uh, currently hovering over, and then I decide whether the source node is this has the same type as the target node, and if this is the case, um, the port is invalid, and otherwise it's valid, and I can actually uh, release the edge and create this edge. Um, what I haven't said uh, before is how to register this um, actual um, um, port provider. Um, and here you can see the entire code for this. This is basically this part here, um, the, the class that I've uh, presented before. And then what I need to do is I need to register this. And registering is here done um, using so-called node decorators. Um, which is an important and a powerful tool, as you will see um, in a moment. So what I do here is basically that uh, here you can tell uh, the graph that it should use for each um, node an own uh, tag port or different tag port candidate provider uh, specifying here this Lambda function.
So let's go back um, to the slides. So here again, I uh, show you how to register this. Um, and this is a very typical pattern that you can find um, in, in Wi files that you use these kind of decorators um, for specifying or yeah, for customizing the behavior of graph elements. So basically, the idea is that uh, using this. Uh, this decorator, each node in the graph become, uh, gets a uh, different tag port candidate provider assigned, and this is called uh, for these kind of interactions that I've shown you. Another example is, uh, for example, to, to restrict the node sizes, what you can do is um, that you can um, call uh, a register and decorator um, and for, for the property size constraint provider decorator. And here you can register a uh, node size constraint provider. And with this, um, you can restrict the node sizes so that the user can only create nodes between uh, 20 pixel width and height and uh, 200 pixels width and height. Uh, and there are many different kinds of decorators that you can actually use to um, customize the behavior of the graph elements. Maybe you already have recognized I've used here different um, methods for this. Um, I use, I've used uh, the set factory here at this point and here the set implementation. Um, so here the idea is that each node gets an own instance, uh, which is important uh, here. The tag provider, port candidate provider is defined for each node differently. Uh, but what you can also do is you can just define the same instance um, for all of the nodes. Um, here, the idea is that all of the nodes get the very same instance of the node size constraint provider. So what we also can do in this very small editor, we can reconnect um, edges. Um, I just want to show you this uh, small video here. Um, so we can reconnect this and here again it's important that we can only reconnect uh, the nodes that uh, the edge such that it ends again at an artist node when it starts at a music node so that it does not become inconsistent. Um, and what we can do is a very similar approach um, that I would like to show you now. Oops. So. Again, what we do is we need to implement some kind of interface. This time I don't use a base class, uh, but uh, I directly implement um, this interface. It's called iEdge Reconnection Port Candidate Provider. Uh, and it works similarly. So it provides port candidates for the nodes uh, when reconnecting uh, the edge. So I need to decide which uh, ports are possible for, for this reconnection. Um, in Wi files, when using the class framework and implementing such interfaces, uh, you typically do this uh, via this class called base class. So you extend the base class, and as an argument, it gets the interface that you would like to implement. Um, again, I just store the edge that is created with this, uh, or that is used for this, uh, or for which we, uh, for which we create this um, candidate provider. And um, what we now need to do is we need to define the source port candidates and also then later on the um, target, port uh, target port candidates. So assume that the user would like uh, takes the edge um, at the source and want to change the source of the edge, uh, then this method is called. Uh, and here the idea is that we just go through all ports of the graph and filter all ports that are not allowed for reconnecting. And they are not allowed um, if they um, or best no, uh, we, we, we only take these ports that are allowed for, for reconnecting. So we um, remove all other no, uh, ports that are not allowed. So the ports that are allowed um, are those um, where the tag is the very same um, as the um, source tag um, of the owner. And for them, we create a default port candidate. So this is a simple object that you can use to uh, wrap this port in order to get a port candidate. 
the very same we do um, for the target port candidates. Um, here we go through all ports of the graph and we take all ports that have the very same tag as the target node um, of our owner edge. And this, uh, for these ports, we create uh, default port candidates. And then again, we need to register this and uh, we again do this uh, using the decorators um, of the graph elements uh, this time, but uh, for, for the edges and not for the nodes. So um, here you have this region handling reconnecting edges and uh, here you have this class that we've just implemented and then at the end, we also have here this uh, registering of uh, the reconnecting port candidate provider. Uh, as this should be an object defined for each edge, we need to uh, use the set factory method. Uh, and we say, okay, we create for each edge such a candidate provider. And this time we have this edge decorator um, instead of the node decorator. And uh, this edge decorator has this um, property edge reconnection port candidate provider decorate. Um, and with this, um, you get uh, the desired behavior. So let's have a look at this. I have um, uh, different nodes, um, let's say like this. Um, and I connect this edge to this node. And I, for example, take the um, target um, of the edge. So I cannot uh, let the edge end at an artist, but I only at a music group. And this is all what you need to do in order to get such an um, behavior. So this is what I've shown in the playground. And the last thing that I would like to show for this part um, is how to react on label changes. And this is quite easy. Uh, we just need to register some, some listener to the label. Uh, in this case, we have some label text changed, but you can also directly uh, react on, on the editing process. So there's uh, different kinds of, of example, uh, uh, possibilities to do this. Um, so in the, our um, example, we just use this to um, yeah to query a lookup um, to get an image for for the label text and then replace um, the placeholder image with the actual image. Um, the code is quite easy. We have an add label text changed listener. We register here this listener. Um, this listener has an event and this event has an item, which is a label, um, I label. And then we just have a look at our image lookup, which I've created at some other point, uh, whether this label um, exists in this lookup. And if this is the case, I just create a new image node style um, using the URL um, within this image lookup. Uh, and that's all what I need to do. So let's have a look at this. Um, so here we act on label editing. Um, and what I can show you, uh, for example, this image lookup uh, is basically um, here a very simple lookup where I have for some names, some images. So let's have a look at this. I create an artist node. I can go here. Uh, I can uh, write Paul McCartney. Um, and when I press enter, this event is called and I can change my, my graph visualization. So the uh, what I now would like to talk about is um, applying layouts. Um, this is should be only a very short part um, of this webinar um, because there are other episodes uh, that you can watch for this. Um, the idea is that um, I would like to trigger a new layout or trigger a layout algorithm um, in order to get an automatic layout. And again, what I do is I just create a toolbar button um, layout and I react on this. And what I do is I call the graph component uh, using morph layout. And in this case, I use a hierarchic layout uh, and I use a very basic configuration. You can use here much more complex uh, configurations in order to create uh, your graph visualizations. Um, 
there's also an example in, in the playground, but I would like to uh, skip this um, as this is uh, basically discussed uh, in these two episodes. So I recommend you to um, have a look at both episodes. So let's go to the next part. Ah, uh, first of all, I would like to also mention um, related demos. Um, first of all, um, especially the demos give you some some kind of uh, source code that you can also use uh, for your use cases and uh, adapt for use your use cases so for example uh, i just picked here the interactive hierarchy layout which is also a kind of of um, an editor input mode uh, which is uh, which is used but it reacts incrementally on on your changes applying the um, hierarchy layout uh, incrementally then um, there's also a demo about uh, process, uh, business process model uh, networks. Uh, here again, it's a very similar example where you can um, change um, the graph and uh, can do more complex things like tra tracking in these elements uh, and then creating new edges. Um, and then again, um, running the layout. Um, so it's a very similar example, a bit more complicated. Um, and if you are interested in the source code, you can also go to GitHub and uh, find the, score, the source code here. Um, if you're really interested, in what you can also uh, can do with the, uh, the graph input mode to get some, some really uh, nice impressions about this, you can also have a look at um, at the Y at Live, um, uh, which is a fully developed uh, editor for for um, for web browsers, and uh, there you can really see what you can do actually with this graph editor input mode. Um, so let's go to the next part, namely snapping. Um, so here the idea is that um, we say, okay, we have uh, these graph elements which can be moved around by the user, but it would be nice if the user gets some help when, when moving these elements, um, having these typical snapping lines. And um, just to few, uh, show you a few of these types of snappings that, uh, that we offer is... Um, uh, I want to give you here some some examples. So, for example, we can snap elements on on the center, but also on on the border of the elements. Um, we can um, also introduce uh, hints about same sizes, so that the user knows, okay, when resizing the node, uh, that it now has the same size, for example, as um, as or the same width as as this node. Um, also, when moving a node, sometimes it's good to equally um, space um, to have equally distanced nodes. So uh, then you get this um, kind of visualization and also kind of snapping. Um, but sometimes it's also nice to have some, some global quit where you can place the, the nodes on. And um, yeah, I would shortly show how to configure this and then also to customize um, uh, this or to create a quit um, snapping. And um, so let's have a look at this. It's quite easy. Uh, basically, what you can do is you just need to create a graph snap context, and then um, you just need to tell the graph editor input mode to use this snap context. And with this, you already get um, the, the snapping functionality. Um, so if I go to uh, this playground part and run this, um, so I have these two nodes here, and I already get uh, these snapping lines that I've talked before um, without doing much uh, or without writing a lot of code, it already comes uh, uh, with the library. Uh, very similar, this is for quit snapping. Um, for quit snapping, um, you only need to define basically your quit and then you need to register your quit uh, using the snap context object that you have seen before. And here you can also tell which of the graph elements actually should snap uh, to the quit. Here, for example, uh, the nodes and the bands. And then you can also tell a type of, of quit snapping that you would like to use in this case, uh, just the quit points. Um, and doing this, um, there will be no visualization actually for, for this quit. Um, 
but uh, you also need to create some kind of visualization or you would often would like to do this so that the user can see the grid and this can be done using the grid visual creator so you don't need to draw the grid on your own uh, but you can reuse already existing components and then you just need to register this um, grid in, in, in the graph component using the background group so which is responsible for drawing the background. And then you basically get here this behavior that um, this node is snapped uh, to the grid. So uh, this is actually uh, all what I wanted to show you. Um, um, for for grid snapping, there's much more what you can actually do. You can customize your snapping. Uh, so if you go to our demos page, you can find also, again, several demos about this, um, about the basic things that I've just shown you, but also about customizing snapping, where you can see here, okay, you, we, we have some kind of possibilities to also define uh, other snapping points. And if you want to learn more about this, I would like to refer you uh, to the demos. So... I would like to go now, now to the uh, part about the clipboard. Um, so the clipboard at the beginning sounds quite uh, obvious, uh, but if you think about how to copy parts of a graph, this becomes a bit more complicated, actually. Um, so the idea is actually really that um, the user has the possibility uh, to mark some elements and then just to copy the elements so that um, also some other elements, sub-elements are copied with this element. So in this case, I've just marked the nodes six and seven, and then I copied this and the labels are, for example, also copied. So when thinking about clipboards and copying graph elements, you need to think about um, how to copy them. And uh, what you can do is you can classify these elements, namely in independent elements, so items that can exist alone, uh, for example, nodes, and dependent elements, so items that cannot exist alone, so for example, edges, labels, bands, and ports. So assume I just delete this node, then the edge would end in, in at no node, so it cannot exist. So when, for example, deleting the node or copying the node, I need to think about what to do with the dependent elements, or uh, especially when copying dependent elements, what, what should I do um, with the um, independent elements? So how, how can I make sure that uh, I get a consistent graph structure again? And um, Basically, there are different cases how how the clipboard works, um, and I just want to show you a few examples. So here in this example, I have marked uh, this node C, and this is the selection before copying. So I copy now the element, I mark uh, another element, and I paste uh, this uh, element. So I've not only marked the node C, but also the edge. Um, and then what I get is that the element C is automatically attached to element A. Uh, so this means that for the dependent element, I've decided, okay, it should connect automatically to A. Um, then about copying um, uh, yeah, another scenario of copying here. In this case, I just select uh, these two elements, but I don't select any other elements, which basically then means that I say, okay, I would like to copy this independent element. And for the dependent element, I just leave the other side as, as is. So I just copy this information and then I get um, an edge from B to C automatically. And then um, there are different ways also for copying dependent elements. So here, for example, I copy this dependent element and I can select two other elements. And when pasting it, uh, we can automatically derive from this information, okay, you obviously want to have a connection between these two nodes copying this element. Um, this is important to, to, to have in mind when thinking about graph editors and uh, yeah, copying and pasting elements um, uh, so that you, that you know how, how this uh, editor actually behaves. 
Of course, you can also customize um, this copying process. Um, so what you can do, you can um, create uh, some some constraints, for example, how elements can be copied. And I've used a very simple example to, to illustrate this. So the idea is that only nodes of the active mode can be copied. So if I say, okay, I currently want to create artist nodes, I can only copy artist nodes. Um, this example here also shows this. I create these music groups and these artist groups, and I mark all of these nodes and I copy them, but when pasting them, I only get the artist notes. Uh, this is a quite simple operation, but it should show you how to actually do this in, in or how to actually customize uh, this clipboard. Um, and to that end, um, I would like to show you the um, source code. Um, so what I do is I um, implement an interface um, which is called iClipboard Helper, and this can be used to customize your clipboard. And then what I do is I create, or I call this the restricted clipboard, and then I need to implement some functions or methods. Um, and here I have these methods that are called when actually doing this copying. For this, I just use a simple um, implementation that basically says, okay, we don't do, want to do nothing. Uh, we don't want to do anything, um, but we want to override or implement methods that uh, are called before copying. Uh, so where, the, where we can say, okay, this element can be copied or not. And uh, here, for example, we have this method should copy. It's called on a model item, so on, on a graph item. We check if it's an inode. If it's not an inode, then it can be copied. We don't care about this. Um, or it's an inode. In this case, it should have the same uh, tag um, as the current mode. Um, and then we can copy it. And uh, we can also do this. Um, uh, for, for the cut operation and pasting can always be done. Uh, this is basically all what you need to do. And again, you need to register this um, class um, in, um, in this uh, entire process. Um, and this is done as follows. Um, here you have this class here. And again, what you can see here is we are again using uh, the node decorator. And this time we use the uh, property clipboard helper decorator. And we don't want to create for each node an own clipboard helper, but we want to reuse the clipboard helper for all of the nodes. So we use the set implementation um, using one instance. And with this, we get uh, the desired behavior. So, Again, there are many different demos that you can have a look at. Um, I picked just three of them. So for example, here, the clipboard, the deferred cut clipboard and the graph copy, you can find them on our demos page. I just want to show you here a very nice use case for, for customizing this clipboard. Um, often that uh, when, when copying elements and then drawing editors, they are just um, created out a bit um, when when cut it, when they are cut, um, so that the user can still see them, but knows okay I've cut them. So in uh, pressing Control X, uh, these nodes are cut uh, out, um, but I can still see them, and now I can paste them somewhere else. So uh, it pastes at the same position. Also that you can customize. Um, and then um, I get the normal visualization. And this demo shows how to do this. Um, this is a bit more complex uh, customization, uh, but basically use uh, similar techniques as I've shown before. Um, yeah, and this should give you already some ideas how to customize um, yeah, the, the clipboard. And of course, I could only give you a very small overview on, on things that you can do in this graph editor input mode. There are many, many more things like uh, track and drop. I've already shown you some demo about this. Um, or also using folding where you have folder nodes that you can expand and uh, collapse. And this you can also integrate in your editing process uh, using context menus and then 
things like lasso selection, um, but also changing the cursors. And again, also these uh, five examples are only few examples that you actually can do. And then if you are interested in more and also in, in how to implement this, I really recommend you to go to the demos. Um, and with this, I would like to um, wrap up the main part of the webinar. If you have some questions, um, now it's the time to, to place them in, in the chat and I will try to answer them um, in our Q&A session. Oops, it's, uh, yeah, in, in our Q&A sessions. So I will have a look at, um, uh, at the chat and I will see where, whether there are some questions. So is it possible to display the snapping lines across swim lanes so that to see snapping lines between nodes of different group nodes and to be more precise, um, you use the table class as swim lane, not just a restyled group node. And um, the, the answer is um, yes, you can actually use um, uh, this. Uh, actually, the default snap lines uh, go through other nodes within a certain range. Um, and the nodes can be also group nodes, table nodes, and then normal nodes. Um, so the snap lines are basically independent um, from, um, or the snap lines consider the bounds of the nodes independently from the types of, um, of the snap line. So I have a question about edges. Is it possible to restrict the direction of the edges? For example, can we ensure that the starting edge is always on the left side of the node and the end edge is on the right side? Um, so basically, um, if, you, if you talk about automatic layouts, um, so when you really want to automatically lay out uh, your, your graph. You can do this using, for example, port constraints or port candidates where you can specify this for your uh, nodes. You can specify this for individual nodes, but for also for all nodes where the edges should start, uh, start and end. Um, and for, for the other, um, probably which you also want to know is uh, whether this is, can be also done um, outside of an automatic layout. And for this, what you can do is you can define these port candidates as I've shown in the webinar um, for, for the particular sites where the node should end uh, or start, uh, where the edge should start or end. So if the edge should start only um, on the left-hand side, um, then you can say, okay, a register and uh, port candidate provider that only creates port candidates on the left-hand side of, of the node. I would like to know how um, we can create restrict uh, or how we can restrict layout algorithms to connect edges to a specific side of the nodes, for example, side north. Um, as I said before, the, you can do this um, basically using port constraints. Um, so you can configure your layout algorithms that it uh, considers port constraints for nodes. Um, and basically what you can do is via the corresponding layout data, you can define uh, such uh, that, uh, that, for example, the, the edge should only start or end at the north side of, of the node. Um, there are also demos on this um, that you can have a look at or also in our developer's guide uh, when looking for port constraints, um, you can um, uh, you will find articles about this, how, how to do this um, in, in the concrete case. Um, the next question is whether um, I, you can have the link um, um, for, for the demos I've shown. Um, uh, in, in, in the webinar, so what we can do is, of course, we can also uh, in the following up uh, email write you these links. Uh, you can also go just uh, to our demos page, uh, wifiles.com um, uh, slash demos, uh, where you can also find um, all these demos, uh, but for, for the particular demos, we will send you them uh, in, in the follow-up uh, follow email. Um, And I, I just read here, a colleague of mine says, okay, we also provide these links um, in, in our YouTube channel. There you will also find uh, these links.
Okay, I think there are no questions furthermore. Um, and with this, I uh, want to thank you for your attention and I wish you happy diagramming.